50 states, 50 choices of where to live. But what are the top 10? That's what we're gonna uncover in this video. One of the top questions I hear, and it doesn't matter if you're looking to retire, had the world open up because now you get to work remotely, you're moving to get closer to, or sometimes farther away from certain family and friends, or that wanderlust is just kicking in, is what is the best state to move to? And unless you have a job transfer that says you are moving to this place, there have never been more options, and it can get confusing about where to finally pick. One of the first places we start is with the cold hard facts, the data. And today, we're gonna look at the data compiled by some super smart researchers at Schoolru who use some NASA level math to look at all of the data on affordability, crime and safety, the economy, education, healthcare, infrastructure, quality of life, and general opportunity, and then combine them to come up with an overall ranking for each state. And these are the top 10. But does the data tell the whole story? Or does the data lie? Let's see what you think of these rankings that are purely based on just the data and numbers alone, and make sure you give me your opinion on the number one choice, because I think it's a pretty shocking choice. So right on to it and our number 10, Washington State. And there's no doubt that Washington State up in the Pacific Northwest is an absolutely gorgeous place to live with not just the natural beauty of its coastal areas, but things like the Olympic Mountains, Mount Rainier, and the Columbia River Gorge make it absolutely beautiful. But what do the numbers look like? And this is where it gets a little dicey. Washington scores super high in a couple of the categories like being number two for quality of life and number five for its healthcare system and just falling out of the top 10 at number 11 for their economy and number 15 for their general opportunity score. Then they're like middle of the road for things like their education system at number 29, number 21 for their infrastructure, and for the state as a whole, number 23 for affordability. Now, I'd take that number 23 for affordability with a huge grain of salt, because if you start to get more specific in the bigger cities and more desirable coastal and sound areas, you might as well be moving to Beverly Hills or on Fifth Avenue in Manhattan. That robust economy, including companies like Microsoft, Boeing, and other blue chips, has driven the affordability of the surrounding areas to the moon. Sure, if you want to live in the more rural and still absolutely gorgeous areas like that, the affordability is there, but throw that out the window when you get to the more urban areas. And finally, the biggest glaring one for me is that they land at number 47 out of 50 for their crime and safety statistics. That's rough. Now again, you can trace a lot of that to the urban areas like Seattle and the more populated areas, but if the affordability of those areas only brought down the state's overall affordability to number 23, you can imagine what that means when the crime and safety gets dragged almost all the way to the bottom at number 47. Jumping to our number nine, the great state of Florida. Florida is an amazingly huge state that seems to have something for just about everyone. You want to be close to the water, they've got two coasts, the Atlantic and the Gulf. You want urban, there are a ton of great urban centers. Places like Miami, Tampa, Jacksonville, you've got them. You want a more rural area with farms, horses, alligators, and swamps? It's all there for you too. But how do their numbers stack up? They make the top 10 in multiple categories, including number four for quality of life, number six for infrastructure, and number seven for the economy. And just outside of the top 10, they come in at number 14 for general opportunity and are still in the top 20 for crime and safety at number 19. And not too far out of that top 20, they come in the middle of the road with a number 23 for healthcare and number 24 for affordability. Where they seem to be trailing a bit is in their education system coming in at number 40, which is a little bit surprising based on the number of universities and colleges in the state. Now, because it's such a big state, some of those more rural areas may be bringing those numbers down. 
Number eight, Maine. Maine is absolutely idyllic. With its coastal areas, lighthouses, and folksy pace of life, it can be a great place to settle into if you're looking for something with a, with a little bit slower pace. And it may be dotted with lots of charming small towns. The one thing to consider is that the entire state is blanketed with snow and cold temperatures for a big part of the year. But what do their numbers look like to make it to our number eight? If you're looking for safe, then Maine is a great option. Coming in at number four in the country and for quality of life, they're not far behind at number eight. And the education system and healthcare system both fall in at a respectable number 14. And right in the middle of the pack, the economy and general opportunity scores for Maine put it at number 25, with their affordability ranking falling just a tad lower at number 28. The big glaring deficiency for Maine, according to the numbers, is their infrastructure, coming in at near dead last at number 49. Now I get it, there's a lot of weather issues. You're right on the coast with all that salt air to corrode everything. But come on, Maine, you can do better. I love Maine, having spent a lot of time up there and nothing beats the Northeast fall season. But I'd like to, you know, get around safely, please. Now, number seven. Now number seven, to me having spent a lot of time here is almost as shocking as our number one, and it is New Jersey. Now, New Jersey gets a bad rap and is the butt of a lot of jokes. And sometimes it's for good reasons and sometimes for their good fellas. But once you look past the stereotypes, there is obviously a lot of good things about living here besides being close, but a heck of a lot cheaper than living in Manhattan. Maybe to get rid of that Goomba reputation, or maybe because it's so important to the people living there, New Jersey has the number two ranked education system in the country. And despite all the jokes, they are ranked number five for crime and safety, and an amazing number seven for quality of life. They also rank in the top 20 for a slew of other categories, including number 11 for infrastructure, number 13 for their healthcare system, and number 19 for their economy. But with all those top 20s, there is still some room for improvement. They come in at number 39 for opportunity and number 41 for affordability. All in all, while a surprising number seven on the overall list, New Jersey has some really great areas and should be on your radar, especially if you want to be close to the action of a place like Manhattan, but don't want to live in it 24 seven. Now, if you're looking for friendly people, a booming economy and beautiful scenery, then look no further than number six on our list, North Dakota. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who the heck would want to live in North Dakota? I mean, I've seen the movie Fargo, and that doesn't exactly make it look like an idyllic place to live. But North Dakota does have an amazing population with some of the most friendly people you'll ever meet and really does have a lot of beauty to it, even when it's covered 10 feet deep in snow. But what do the numbers look like? With an abundance of resources and strong leadership, North Dakota comes in with a truly robust economy landing at number four in the nation with their economy, number four in general opportunities, and I think more impressive, lands in at number five in affordability. That's a dangerous combination and one worth taking a second look at. A booming economy and still pretty darn affordable. But there are no rubes there either. Their education system is ranked number seven in the country. And even with all that snow and weather, they maintain a respectable number 20 ranking for their infrastructure. With decent middle of the road numbers for crime and safety at number 27, and both healthcare and quality of life coming in at number 31, this makes for a solid middle of the road option for our list of the top 10. Coming in at number five, Massachusetts. Having gone to law school in Boston, I've spent a fair amount of time exploring and getting to know much of Massachusetts. And it is a fantastic state with a lot of opportunity. 
As home to some of the best universities and colleges in the world, including Harvard and MIT, you would expect that the state would place a lot of emphasis on the education system as a whole, and you would not be disappointed. Massachusetts has the absolute top-ranked education system in the country. But that's not all. Their healthcare system, which is probably because of all those great colleges and universities, is ranked number four in the country. Massachusetts is also pretty darn safe, with a crime and safety ranking of number six, and the general quality of life ranking for the state as a whole is number six as well. Infrastructure for the state is ranked just outside the top 10 at number 12 with a bustling set of ways to get around from the turnpikes to the T. The General Opportunity Index ranking is still in the top 20 at number 19, even though their economy is ranked almost dead in the middle at number 26. And with numbers these good, you'd expect there to be at least one area where improvement is needed, and that is affordability, coming in at a really, really low number 48. A lot of that is due to the cost of living in Boston proper, and even the uptick that would get factored in by looking at where the super wealthy live on places like Martha's Vineyard. But a great choice all around, especially if you have someone to shovel you out during the winters. Speaking of shoveling out, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a theme for our remaining four states. And that number four is New Hampshire. New Hampshire is like the close cousin to Massachusetts. It's got a lot of the same features and benefits without some of the more congested and urban -y parts like Boston. Absolutely gorgeous and a bit slower pace. And if you're looking for safe, this is the state for you. They are ranked number one in the crime and safety category. They're number seven for their healthcare system, number nine for education, and number 10 for their economy. Like I said, it's like Massachusetts without the big urban center of Boston. Up in the Northeast, including our upcoming number two, they share a lot of the same things like values and culture, as well as things like majestic scenery and amazing falls. But unlike Massachusetts' bottom-of-the-barrel affordability ranking, New Hampshire comes in at number 12, and an opportunity ranking of number 13, making it a fantastic choice if this is the type of area you might want to call home. They're also a solid number 17 in infrastructure. The only area that falls outside of that top tier of places to live is the quality of life, which comes in at number 37, which I did find a little surprising. And there must be something in the water in those Dakotas because coming in as our number three state in the country is South Dakota. While best known for Mount Rushmore and Yankton being the birthplace of Tom Brokaw, South Dakota, as long as you can get over the long, cold, and snowy winters, is a fantastic place to live and thrive. Their economy, like North Dakota, is booming, thanks in large part to all of the natural resources located here. They are number two for opportunities, as well as being number two for affordability. And their education system is also a very highly ranked number four on the list. Crime and safety, they are ahead of their northern neighbors by a few at number 23, and their healthcare is a tad better, coming in at number 27. But they're behind a bit when it comes to their infrastructure and quality of life, both coming in at number 39 and definitely behind when it comes to their economy, ranking as number 17 versus North Dakota's number four spot. As long as you don't mind a long winter and are looking for a slower pace of life, South Dakota could make a great place for you to live. Number two, Vermont. If our number four, New Hampshire, was a cousin to Massachusetts, then our number two, Vermont, would be their kissing cousin. If you were looking to live in a fairy tale or storybook version of New England, then Vermont is your go-to. Slower paced, beauty all year long, and cable knit sweaters everywhere you look. Yes, it gets cold. Yes, the winters are long, but hot dang if you want to live in a romanticized version of America from the early 1900s, it doesn't get much better than Vermont. The perfect blend of blue blood and individualism abound in this amazing state. And I mean, 
It is the birthplace of Ben and Jerry's. And who doesn't love some Chunky Monkey on a cold December night? And the numbers back it up. If health and safety is your primary driver, then you're in luck. Vermont is ranked number one in healthcare and number three in the crime and safety category, which is pretty awesome. Their education system is also top tier, ranking at number six in the country. And there is still a lot of opportunity as they rank just outside of the top 10 at number 12. Unlike Massachusetts, it isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg to live here either. They rank number 16 in the affordability category, a pretty sweet deal if you ask me. And their infrastructure isn't half bad coming in at number 18. See Maine, this is what you need to work towards. Their quality of life comes in middle of the road at number 22 and their economy at number 27. But it's a smallish state, it's slower there and the hustle and bustle of Massachusetts is absent. If there was one more ranking, especially for all of our Northeast contenders, I would do one for the most amazing falls. And in that category, Vermont would absolutely top that list. Very solid very deserved number two ranking for Vermont. Which brings us to our number one state to live in. And to be honest, this one surprised me, maybe even shocked me. But let me know what you think in the comments below and what you think about Wyoming being our number one. Now, don't get me wrong, I've lived in Wyoming and it is absolutely breathtaking and amazing, but is it number one? I don't know about all that, but we'll dive into why the data shows that it should be ranked this high. Yes, Yellowstone National Park is here, what I affectionately call nature's Disneyland. And in my many, sometimes weekly trips there, I would see things that you wouldn't see anywhere else in the country, except for in the park. I've watched the elk migrate and spend the winter just outside of Jackson. I have stared outside my living room windows at the Tetons. But number one? So, looking at the numbers, Wyoming is the top state in the nation for a whopping three of the categories. They are number one for opportunity, number one for economy, and number one for affordability. There's definitely something going on here economically. It's like North and South Dakota, one of the most resource rich areas in our country, and I'm sure that's what is driving these numbers. But there's just over a half million people in the entire state. And because of that and the need for workers to make use of those resources that are up there, they have to pay them extremely well to entice them to come up and move there. Once you get there though, the rest of their rankings are not too shabby either. The education system is a very solid number 13. Crime and safety is also solid coming in at number 16. But with all of these very good numbers, the state does fall a little short on some of the things that you would expect a big open state without a lot of people would fall short on. Their infrastructure rating is number 33, healthcare 37, and quality of life comes in at 36. Like I said, I loved living there. There is a spirit of independence and get it done-ness that you don't find many other places. When I moved there, one of the longtime residents told me that you have to put your big boy pants on because rugged individualism is what rules and there is no safety net in a lot of the situations. And I think you see that mentality reflected in these numbers. Yes, there is a lot of opportunity, a lot of potential to set you and your family up for future success, but there isn't a lot of the suburban and urban comforts that so many of us have become maybe too reliant on. If you're looking for a good spot with opportunity and to test yourself, Wyoming could be somewhere to look more into. But number one, I'm not so sure. Let me know below what you think. And if you wanna learn more about locations throughout our big, beautiful country, I'm putting on the screen the next video that you should watch now. Thanks for spending some time with me and learning about the top 10 states to live in. And I'll see you on the next one. The Relocation King, out.